Hello everyone, I am Tassa and today I'm going to be going over the Gems of War objectives for the Spin Me Right Round event in which the RNC, the Guardian, is added to the game. So let's get into that. As far as the troop itself, it comes in with a bunch of green, red, arcane uh, trade stones for only 200 each, the cheapest you'll ever be able to get them. So good for leveling up Yagoi and other similar uh, decent uh, green reds. As far as the troop itself, uh, a little bit weird that it has a 16 mana cost. Obviously this is yet another one of the potion uh, related troops. As far as what it does specifically, it ends up poisoning 1-3 to three, uh, random enemies and creates 1-3 uh, to three, uh, green mana potions. Of course, it's the uh, green mana uh, potion accumulating one. And if the enemy is uh, web, there's a 50% chance to gain next turn. Even though it doesn't apply web off its ability, it does do so like the other ones off of its uh, skull. Also has a little bit of armored. Overall, pretty underwhelming. Not sure why this one has a 16 mana cost and not 14 like some of the other few. Doesn't seem like its ability justifies having that higher amount. And overall, is probably not going to be used much, given that that is one of the things that uh, Flask can end up doing. So uh, you would end up just getting it for the Kingdom Star, which does bring Azul Carry to 19 stars. Unfortunately, not 20 stars yet, uh, even with the Mythic and everything. Uh, it will be 20 stars, oddly enough, the next Bounty Hunter, which I believe is in about three weeks. October 22nd, I believe is the date. Somewhere's around there. It's like a week before Halloween or so. Uh, Azul uh, Carry will finally be uh, 20 star. And this is pretty relevant because of event keys. It's a good idea to uh, potentially be to that point. If you're later on in the game or earlier on in the game, you might just want to aim for, you know, of course, 10 stars to be able to get that uh, magic bonus or 5 stars if you haven't already. But uh, 20 starable, it will be as soon as the next bounty hunter uh, rolls around. As far as the event key drop table, it is probably one of the weirder ones. Uh, mostly because we have something going on this week that uh, we've actually never had happen before. So, of course, uh, last Friday we ended up getting a new mythic. We actually got two mythics uh, this uh, last few days, by the way. I'll be going over the... Um, the um, the Monument of Stars is called the other mythic. Uh, this one ended up becoming available as of uh, today, so we'll be going over that on the stream tonight after we do all the Chapter 9 uh, tasks. However, of course, last Friday we also ended up getting Arc Proxy uh, Yavandra, and she's still in the Glory Gem Guild and VIP chest drop table until Friday reset time, so basically the end of Thursday. And um, this is the first time ever where the mythic from the Friday follows into the next week where that next week is the event week for the uh the mythic so of course uh, she's from zolkari and is currently a zolkari event week so there is seems to be a bit of a weird glitch from what i could tell uh in which um she is indeed in the event key drop table however it seems that arachnian weaver might actually not be in the drop table which is kind of weird um, so do be extremely mindful of that. If you want to try to get Arachnian Weaver off of the event key drop table this week, uh, you probably want to wait until Friday or later, you know, basically this weekend. Because from what I could tell, it is actually impossible at this current moment in time to get Arachnian Weaver from event keys. I'm not 100% on that, but from what I've seen from uh, various people and from global chat not showing up at all as far as Arachnian Weaver drops, uh, it definitely would appear that it is not in drop table. So uh, do be very, very wary of that, that if you are trying for Arachnid Weaver, you might want to hold your keys until uh, after Friday reset. Or to play it really safe, do it on Saturday or Sunday, in which case you should be able to get either Weaver or the uh, Arch uh, Proxy Yavandra. Otherwise, if you try open him now, you're just going to get Arch Pro Proxy Yavandra, which if that is your goal, then that's perfectly fine. But if that is not your goal, then uh, do be very wary of that. Uh, they're both pretty good mythic, so either or is still fine, but obviously if you're looking for one compared to the other, uh, you might want to uh, wait otherwise. Anyways, uh, aside from that, every single other thing that you see here is within the uh, drop table, with the exception of the four uh, troops from um, uh, Eldrazor, uh, but everything else here is uh, available. Uh, overall, it's a uh, definitely decent week to go for event keys. There's things like uh, web spinners here, uh, triple damage on uh, basically every skull hit it ever does, as long as they don't have immune, uh, since most things don't have immune to uh, web. Uh, of course, both the two mythics here are amazing, though do keep in mind uh, uh, if you're looking for uh, Arachnid Weaver, wait till the weekend to open your event keys, otherwise you can open them now and try for Arc Proxy Evandra, which just came out a few days ago. Um, and aside from that, that's pretty much it. <laughs> Mostly just Web Spinner and the Mythics are the uh, main thing that main things that you're looking to pick up if you're going to be opening uh, event keys here. But uh, all three of which are uh, some of the strongest things within the entire game, uh, particularly Web Spinner. Um, well, Weaver too. Well, you know, all three of them have their usefulness, but triple damage to almost every skull you ever do. Very, very amazing. Uh, they made that change like two and a half years ago, and it has been extremely meta ever since. Uh, obviously not used for everything, but uh, still a very solid option. Anyway, as far as the Ward Lore event, we do have magic this week. Yay, instead of having to deal with annoying skulls. Um, but uh, that obviously makes things uh, a little bit easier. 
Uh, a couple different ways that you can go about uh, winning. Obviously, anything that's really magic heavy. So, Arachnid Weaver is going to be a good idea. Any hero weapon that hits all enemies. Uh, though you are restricted specifically to green. Uh, King Avalon, so you can give a bunch of elves 50% uh, mana start while also doing damage to all enemies. Uh, Yagwe is pretty good. He can loop back into himself while doing a lot of damage while scaling off that damage. Uh, maybe even uh, Diviner, depending on how you're going about it, in order to feed magic. Like if you're feeding magic into Weaver or something. Uh, obviously, that will get multiplied as well. So there's a decent handful of options that uh, uh, you should be able to have something. Worst comes to worst, uh, you can build a super cheap team around War and Peace, and you should be fine as far as uh, the event. But if you have some of the bigger legends and mythics that can also do um, damage to multiple enemies, uh, those would also be a good idea to use. As far as the actual order in which you should be doing the rooms, uh, it is a bit of a confusing one. Uh, the main thing that you should note is that the spinneret is the worst possible room. Uh, beyond that, it is kind of rarity order, in which case every single room is a different amount. With the one exception that the Arntzy, the Guardian, is the absolute best room that you can end up taking. So you do want to be prior prioritizing um, the Arantzi, the Guardian, as this one will keep scaling over and over again and will ultimately be the one that is worth the amount, uh, most amount of points and will probably end up being that one that gets like super ridiculously hard as far as how high it gets in level and um, still will give you the most amount of points. As far as the exact order, it is Arantzi, the Guardian, then Arachnid Weaver, then uh, Martin Valine, then Web Spinner, then Tome Spider, and then all the way in last being the uh, Spinneret. Uh, once again, a very, very annoying event week where literally every single room is a different amount of scoring. But as long as you prioritize taking Artsy the Guardian and avoid ever taking Spinnerets unless you're forced to have to, you should be perfectly fine and it'll pretty much just go into place as far as the rarity order which you're uh, taking, or, you know, the room order in which you're taking. But, um, yeah, it's, it's a weird one. <laughs> like World Event normally is. It's like a jigsaw puzzle for the scoring, like, almost every other week. Uh, very annoying. But um, it is how it is this week. Anyways, uh, as far as other things that we got going on this week, we have a uh, faction event uh, for um, Eldrazor uh, tomorrow. Uh, Wednesday, we have the pet for Zolkari, that Zolkari spider. Uh, Thursday, we have the um, uh, class event for Orbweaver. Orbweaver, generally not used too much outside of Guild War. However, in Guild War, it's used for so many things, <laughs> particularly life and death uh, Orbweaver team. Uh, with Arachnid Weaver and everything. However, um, there are a few other instances where it can end up being utilized. Overall, absolutely amazing hero class. Uh, while it's not used offensively that much, uh, it still can be. Uh, it's just a little bit slower compared to some other options. Also, uh, has a mean to mana drain, which is pretty nice. Uh, that's unique uh, for as far as hero classes are concerned. Of course, it could still be stunned out of it, but uh, still an interesting aspect nonetheless. And uh, overall, it's uh, mostly used for its gigantic amount of resummon, particularly its capability of summoning uh, giant spiders whenever it ends up getting hit, as well as the weapon synergies that it ends up having, as well as the fact it counts as elves, so you could do a 50% elf start into a bunch of other stuff like a Ractin Weaver and get some really good synergy, like Life and Death Weaver, which is the most common way of using it. But uh, yeah, really good hero class, uh, definitely worth uh, considering looking into some. Especially if you end up picking up a Rackton Weaver later this weekend, once it's actually in the event you drop people, once um, the um, Arc Proxy is uh, stopped being the uh, exclusive mythic. Uh, aside from that, uh, oh, and we have a arena event this Friday. Boo! <laughs> but yeah, weekend arena event. Anyways. Uh, aside from that, as far as Mythics this week in Soulforge, there are two pretty noteworthy ones, uh, High King Iron Guts and Mother of uh, Darkness. Overall, I definitely say High King Iron Guts is a higher priority. Uh, basically, this is the Mythic that you get if you just want to auto-win all the factions. Uh, the second you own this, every single faction that has access to yellow, uh, blue, or brown, you can pretty much just kill. Uh, you have higher stats when you're doing factions, so you have a higher base attack, so he can get his more so his guaranteed uh, devour. Then you just have a bunch of curses on your team, so you can end up bypassing any immunities. And then boom, you just devour all four of the enemy team, poke them with skulls, and uh, you're good to go. And uh, yeah, he's one of the most auto wins, if not the most auto win uh, troop for uh, doing delves. So if you're still looking to uh, delve deeper and uh, try getting that done, well, this is the way to do it, or the main way that you could uh, end up utilizing it. But uh, yeah, highly, highly advised. Generally, one of the first few mythics, I would say, to craft within the game. And if you want to go and start doing factions and get deep in them right away, it's possibly even the first mythic you would ever consider crafting. So if you're getting close, um, definitely worth uh, considering this week. Aside from that, something that you pick up a little bit later in the game is Mother of Darkness. Uh, this is mostly used for that one rogue team. Um, it's okay to get for that purpose. Uh, it's not really used for many other instances. It's a pretty fun team. However, there are things quicker than it. Um, but still, pretty nice mythic in that context. Uh, the main relevant thing about her, 
aside from her rogue synergy, is uh, she's the best bleeder in the entire game, being able to bleed all enemies for a single uh, extra turn, uh, which does uh, allow her to basically do 10 true damage to all enemies per turn uh, due to perpetual bleed. So she has that going for it, but is mostly used for a pure rogue team with the rogue spider, or the, I should say the night spider. Uh, as far as weapons, nothing really too noteworthy to uh, end up picking up. Uh, if you are going to pick up something, maybe the Book of Brambles. I was mentioning this uh, last Friday when I was going over some teams with the mythic. This does boost ratio based on elf. Uh, if not mistaken, there's one here that does it based on Zulk carry however that one's not as useful compared to the one that does it based on elves so if you're going to pick up any weapon uh this week i'd probably consider book of brambles or just completely skipping on the soul forge this week um but if you're going to go for one it is the uh, slightly uh, better one of the uh, bunch if you're doing it based on its actual uh performance anyways uh aside from that let's go and uh, just quickly mention over some of the teams for the week so as far as the uh world events uh the main team that i'll probably be using is uh war and peace yagway uh, King Avalon and Arachne and uh, Weaver. This gives all the elves 50% mana start. Uh, we have our uh, double cast here, so we can just cast, cast again. Uh, War and Peace, uh, regardless if you're doing the cheaper team or the more expensive team, is pretty much going to be the staple of what you're going to be using for your hero. Um, there are a few other things you could use, but uh, War and Peace is nice AoE damage with the spell increase damage that we have for the metals. Uh, King Avalon also doing a AoE into a half mana start. And of course, Arachne and Weaver just being Arachne and Weaver. Uh, it has basically the capability of making sure you never lose while also doing a bunch of damage. Uh, you don't have any true damage synergy, unfortunately, on this team. However, you do get a lot of mana accumulation when it does do a cleanup kill, and it has the backup summon of Web Spinner in case you're getting into sticky situations, and with Impervious Stealthy, it'll likely be the last thing to survive on your team, making sure that you hopefully will never actually die. Um, so that'll be kind of helpful. Though it is a little bit unfortunate it doesn't have any true, true damage uh, synergy. Uh, as far as a uh, cheaper version of World Lore Event, you probably saw it on the other screen there, but you basically want to build entirely around War and Peace. I do advise trying to replace out something here for another damage source, like maybe the green purple mythic that you, or sorry, the green purple legend they end up getting from the um, faction itself, since that's a little bit of an easier uh, drop to end up getting. Um, but overall, um, yeah, you likely want to try fitting in another damage source. Of course, I was just trying to do all epic and below, um, so we went with this. Uh, however, uh, trying to squeeze another damage source in there if you happen to have any legends or mythics that can do so, uh, definitely uh, advise, like switching out for Yagwe or, you know, any kind of damage that you happen to have that fits in there. But uh, this is the lowest possible rarity that can still get it done, so I figured to show it that way in case you don't have any of the uh, higher uh, rarity stuff. Anyways, as far as... Um, the uh, faction event for tomorrow, it is a green purple restriction. Of course, weapon doesn't count. Uh, so you could basically just do a standard Rowane team. Uh, and by standard, I mean replacing out for Thrall since you can't use Mirage Queen. Uh, Thrall is still uh, really good. And even if you have lower magic, it still has higher magic within the context of Delves. So uh, it'll still have a pretty decent amount of destroys. Aside from that, pure faction's a little bit weird. Uh, we use Deep Huntsman in first slot. However, we're not using Deep Huntsman to use Deep Huntsman. You don't actually ever want to cast his ability. We're using Deep Huntsman for the 100% chance to summon a Tome Spider. Tome Spider is actually our first slot. We just want to let him die and then go get it there. Alternatively, you can also go double deep Huntsman and kind of do it that way. Uh, as the main thing that's actually carrying you through this faction, more so than anything else, is actually the Tome Spider. You're not allowed to actually start with a Tome Spider, otherwise it doesn't count as pure faction. However, uh, you can get a Tome Spider by having him die, and then boom, there you go. So uh, you can go double up on him and let one die and let the other one live. Uh, or you can go single, let him die, and then just have it there. Uh, it, it really just depends how you want to go about it. But uh, basically, the main way that you're winning this dungeon or this delve is off of specifically Tome Spider. That is pretty much the entire premise of how the uh, pure faction uh, tends to go for the most part. Uh, you do have an uh, insta-kill chance too, but uh, this is a little bit luck-based. But uh, you can also try uh, doing it that way as well, which is what the team is a little bit more oriented on. Anyways, aside from that, uh, Orb Weaver class this uh, Thursday. Uh, we don't have too many things to really use for it. Um, you can use a couple bigger uh, damage sources if you want. However, this one just uses a bunch of mana link. Going straight into a nice War and Peace to get a nice quick kill. And uh, for the lower battles, that should be perfectly fine. Even for the later battles, you can still cycle through a couple uh, hits. Though, uh, for the later battles, you might want to have one other slight different damage source in place of uh, one of them. This goes a little bit uh, quicker for when you do have the higher amount of durability. But for the lower amount of durability, this will be perfectly fine just for go going through and getting those 25 gems collected <laughs> from the uh, Thursday event if you're just doing the minimum and not hitting the... Um, the uh, leaderboard at all. 
But anyways, guys, that'll wrap it up for this video. If you still have any other questions, feel free to leave it in the comment section below. Uh, tonight, we will be going over all of the Chapter 9 tasks, as well as messing around with the new mythic of Fountain of Stars. Uh, if you have the bigger pass, it is available as of uh, today. Otherwise, it'll be available in uh, one week from today. So I'll be messing around with that tonight. Uh, we'll cover the video maybe this weekend or in the next few days at some point this week. Um, and then uh, maybe a little bit closer to when it comes out for most people during the actual pass. But at some point, <laughs> we'll cover a video going over it. Uh, it's basically a double convert where um, ha almost all of it is... Um, two potions it's only five but you're generally still going to be able to land it uh still a little bit clunky overall but we'll see how it goes um the enchant seems way way too low for what it does though and uh overall uh, honestly um the uh, Yavandra almost seems better than this thing <laughs> but i haven't gotten the chance to mess around with it so we'll see exactly how that thing uh ends up panning out overall anyways guys i hope you all have a wonderful week best of luck if you're still going to be trying for the uh, mythic R uh, remember uh, if you want arachnid weaver do not open event keys until like friday or saturday or sunday because uh from what i could tell it is not in drop table so do be extremely wary of that if you've been waiting to get arachnid weaver as it might be literally impossible to get until uh the event for yavandra is done and uh, do keep in mind, if you want to get Evandra, Friday resets the last day that you'll be able to uh, do that. Though, theoretically, you might still be able to do it in Event Keys after. Oh, no, this is a very weird week. First time <laughs> we've ever had a Mythic coming in straight for the event. So, she technically would actually still be available in Event Key Drop Table those other three days. Because it should be both Weaver and her at that point then. But, uh, who knows? Maybe they coded it incorrectly. We'll find out more then. <laughs> and I'll try to let you guys know. But anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching. Have a wonderful week, and I will catch you guys soon. Goodbye, everyone.